The Day of the Roses uh, was a mini-series that aired on uh, Channel 10 in Australia way back in 1998, and uh, it's been presented now by ViaVision on a two-disc DVD set that almost makes it feel like a, a l extra long movie. Like, it feels like a three-and-a-half-hour movie, to be completely honest, when you sit down to watch it. You do not notice the time going by at all as you watch this, because it is... Uh, a, a truly great Australian miniseries, I guess, is the only way to word it. It uh, kind of centres around um, the coroner's inquest into this, the coroner being um, played here by John Back. And I think that actually makes it more of an interesting uh, watch. Uh, it, it's, it's around the, about the Granville uh, train disaster that happened in 1977. Now... Most people would know about the disaster itself. What they probably wouldn't know is how many people lost their lives and what the cause of the accident was and also the drama that surrounded the coroner's inquest because uh, there was a few people out there that didn't want the truth to be told and you, you learn very, very early on um, in this film that things aren't what they seem when it comes to... Um, the investigation. Now, the coroner called in a uh, a kind of expert uh, called Boris Osman, played by Peter O'Brien, and uh, he started to put the pieces together pretty quickly about what happened with Granville, and uh, in doing so, um, caused trouble for the coroner because all of a sudden you had government ministers wanting to put pressure on the coroner not to find have the findings of that Boris was coming out with. Uh, made public because it made them look very, very bad. Now, I actually thought with this documentary we could have seen more of those scenes. We saw a lot of scenes where um, p uh, people were phoning the coroner and basically saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do that if if you get those findings and let them be made public. We saw them trying to stop um, Boris from actually going and... Um, and, and and looking at the, the wreckage of the train. But I think I actually wanted to see more of that. Like, I wanted to see more of that kind of attempted standover um, actions, and I wanted to see more of how the coroner responded to that, because that that is very unusual. That is corruption in its pure form, and I think, in a way, we wanted to see more of that. Look, I was glad that this film was told through the eyes of the coroner and also Boris. I thought that was really well done. You do get to see the disaster. Don't think that this is just an office drama because I've said that. No, you do actually get to see the actual disaster itself and you get to see uh, some of the uh, one of the junior constables that was there on the day, played by Stephen Curry. Um, you see victims uh, such as Erica Watson, played by Gigi Edgeley. Um, there's a nurse played by Rebecca Gibney, uh, more of the victims, um, Margaret played by Heather Mitchell that most people would know from Spellbinder. There's, uh, Brian Gordon, who's probably one of the, the victims that this focuses on most. He's played by, uh, Paul Mercurio. Um, there's a great sergeant's performance in here by Wayne Pigram, which is kind of funny when you consider that Gigi Edgeley and Wayne Pigram then went on to be in Farscape together. The person I thought, though, that really, really stole the show with his, with his performance in this was uh, another um, a rescue operative uh, played by um, Jeremy Sims named Burry, Jerry Buckman. You almost want to see a movie uh, told about him because of what happens to him after... The disaster is just, uh, it, it floors you. Um, basically, the the poor guy was a firefighter. He called in sick on the day of Granville, but was also a volunteer with a rescue organization. He ended up going to Granville because of the amount of calls that they were receiving about needing help and uh, ended up getting in trouble because of the fact that he was, uh, he attended on a day that he was uh, supposed to be off sick, which, yeah, you just... You, you kind of find it really weird that that's the way that they would um, go with that. Um, look, a lot of people would probably think that, oh, because it's a um, a, t a television miniseries, that the acting or the special effects or anything like that would be um, would be worse than normal. It's not. It This really, really holds up. Uh, Peter Fisk, the director, 
um, was the director of, uh, was a director in one of my favorite television series of all time, Police Rescue, and he kind of brings the intensity of a Police Rescue episode, um, to this, The Day of the Roses, and I don't mean that in a really bad way, because Police Rescue, for those out there that haven't seen it, is one of the most suspenseful television shows that you will ever see. You literally sit down and watch Police Rescue, uh, an episode of it, and you feel like you've just watched a feature film. Um, the Day of the Roses is the same, and it's just an absolutely amazingly performed um, uh, film. Um, like I said, it kind of mixes the office politics and the investigation of... Um, of Boris in with what actually happened on the day. And there's some really dramatic scenes in there. Uh, Jeremy Sims, like I said, he just steals the show with, with some of his performances in this film, especially when he starts to having to pull dead children out of the wreck and things like that. He just puts in this, um, absolutely stunning performance that just reminds you what a great actor Jeremy Sims is. Peter O'Brien is great in this as well as uh, Boris Osman. Um, there's some really touching scenes in there with his own family and some amazing suspenseful scenes as well as he's trying to put everything together. Um, and I think that's what I like about this uh, film, The Day of the Roses. It almost feels like a CSI um, investigation but a lot more dramatic in a way that only Australian drama can deliver. Um, I thought this was a, a really, really good uh, film. If you've never seen it, go out and check it out because it is a an amazing film about one of the worst days in Australian history, uh, but you'll learn so much from it. Um, I'm going to give this one three and a half out of five.